All right, let's go ahead and get into another lecture. Uh, so here we're going to be talking about uh, economic lot size. And so this actually has to do uh, with businesses uh, producing whatever good they, they might sell. And so really what we're going to see is, okay, so let's presume you're, you're a business and, and you're, you're making uh you're making something, you're making t-shirts, let's say. And you you have choices there on how you can sort of produce your t-shirts. Maybe on January 1st, right at the start of the year, you just decide to have one big giant um, sort of frenzy and you produce all of your all of your t-shirts that you're hoping to sell for that entire year. You just make them in one big large batch. Um, you could also alternatively, maybe you just make your t-shirts once a month. So maybe 12 different times throughout the course of that year, you're gonna make your t-shirts um, just that you're gonna sell for that month. And obviously if you do that, you're gonna make less at a time, but you have to do that process more often. And that's gonna, this is gonna be economic lot size what we talk about. So like I just said, um, companies will produce goods in batches and maybe um, depending on who you are, um, maybe you decide to make your t-shirts all in one large batch. So on January 1st, you make all of your t-shirts for the entire year. You have one big operation and, and you make all of the t-shirts that you're planning on selling for that entire year in one batch right in the beginning. If you do that, it's going to cost you a lot of money to set up that all of that. That one big large project of, hey, I'm going to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of t-shirts or whatever how, whatever your quantity is. If you're going to make a lot of them, that's going to cost you a lot of money right at the get-go to, to make those t-shirts. But then you have an upside to this. Because you've made all of your t-shirts in one large batch, now for the rest of the year, you don't really have to, you don't have to do anything in terms of making your t-shirts. And so what that means is that your recurring cost, what we'll call marginal cost, the costs that, that occur over the course of, of the year, those are pretty low um, because you don't, because you've already made all your t-shirts and there's not really much more to do. You just sell them. You don't have to worry about making those t-shirts. The alternative to that, as I, as I described before, is doing multiple small batches. So maybe instead of making, you know, all of your t-shirts for the entire year, right in the beginning, maybe you decide, hey, on the beginning of every month, I'm going to make, make t-shirts just that I need for that month. And so you're obviously going to make less t-shirts each time, but you're going to have to do that 12 times. And so presumably that operation, that, that setup of making your, making your t-shirts each of those 12 times, because you're not really making that many, presumably your setup costs, your fixed costs are a bit lower than when you did all of them at once, but you have to do it much more often. You have to do it every month instead of just once a year. And so your marginal costs, your recurring costs throughout the year are going to be higher. So there's pros and cons to both of these scenarios. But luckily, what we can actually do mathematically is we can figure out how much you should produce and how many times you should do it such that you minimize your total cost. And that, that number, that quantity that you should produce is called economic lot size. So economic lot size is an actual number here. And basically what this, what this says here is it tells you whether you should make um, 12 t-shirts. Uh, let, let's say you're running a small operation. It tells you whether you should make 12 t-shirts one time a year, or if you should make one t-shirt 12 times a year, or maybe you make six t-shirts twice a year, or maybe you make four t-shirts three times a year. This number here tells you exactly what to do there. It tells you how many to make and how many batches, how many times to do that in order to minimize your costs. And so really what, what this looks like here um, and, and this doesn't have anything to do with cost, but this just, this just has to do with what this looks like in, from a production standpoint. Um, so so if, we're, if we're looking at this from a, from a production standpoint, we might say, all right, let's say that we, let's say our time is 10, I don't know, maybe it's 10 months, but um, just our time is 10 here. Let's say that we, that over 10 months, we know that we're going to sell a hundred items, maybe a hundred t-shirts. And so one thing that I could do 
is I could just right at the start of time, right, right when we start off, I could produce a hundred of my t-shirts. Then I don't have to do anything. Over time, I sell, I sell, I sell, I sell. And as time is moving on, my number of t-shirts that I currently have in stock just goes down because I'm selling them. And then after 10 months, I don't have any because I know that I sold a hundred, that I can sell a hundred t-shirts in 10 months. Well, the alternative here is to instead, maybe I could, maybe I could just make 50 t-shirts right off the bat. So right when time starts here, I could make 50 t-shirts. Well, what that means is because I know that sort of my rate of how, how quickly I can sell these is I would sell a hundred in 10, 10 months. I would sell 50 in five months. So now I have a problem though. After five months, I don't have any more t-shirts left and I still need to produce more, more t-shirts. So at this point in time, I have to produce more. I have to produce 50 more t-shirts again. And then that's going to lead me to selling 50 more t-shirts over this second period of time. And again, what, another, another option that I could do is I could sell, I, I could start off by producing 25 t-shirts. And then after two and a half months, I'll have run out of t-shirts. So I got to go and I got to produce 25 more. And then I'm going to sell those over another two and a half months. I'm going to go up again. But when I produce 25 more after two and a half months, I sell all those off. And then I'm going to produce 25 more. And then after two and a half months, let's make that line a little straighter. After two and a half months, I'm going to sell all of them. And so what you're seeing here is, is, a, is a handful of things. We're seeing the different options of um, you know, how, how often I can produce versus how many uh, I'll have at a given time. But also what we're seeing here is actually sort of an average number of items that you would currently have in stock. And so this brings me to another point is that you're, you're going to have to worry about storing these items. You know, if you've got a, you got a big warehouse, maybe you got hundreds of thousands of t-shirts that, that you're trying to sell, you got to store them and that's going to cost money. You got to rent out a warehouse. You got to maybe keep it air conditioned, depending on, you know, what, what your products are. Uh, you got to pay people for security for the warehouse. There's a whole bunch of costs that it, that it costs to, um, there's a whole bunch of different, you know, sort of things that it costs to store an item. And so what I'm seeing here, let's, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to take out this green scenario here. There we go. So we'll, we'll, we'll not worry about this green scenario here. So let's say, let's say our, we're looking at these two options where I have a hundred items and I make them all right at the get go. And then over time here, you know, I, I sell them and I sell them and I sell them until I have none left. What I see there is that on average, I have 50 in stock at a given time on average, right? Obviously in the beginning I have a hundred and part right through I have 75 in stock sort of in the back, if you will, in my warehouse, right in the middle, I have 50, 25, zero. If you just take an average, if you look at every single time on here and you take an average of how many items you have in stock, it's gonna end up being 50. And you'll notice I'm just looking at sort of that right there. I'm just looking at the halfway point right there versus when I do multiple batches of 25, so when I keep, when four different times I produce 25 t-shirts, you notice, well, obviously because I've, I'm only producing 25 t-shirts at a time and then I'm selling all of them before I produce more, I never have more than 25 in stock at a given moment. And actually the average here ends up being right in the middle at 12 and a half. And so in this blue scenario, I have a lot less in stock at a given time than I do in the red scenario. So on the blue here, my cost for storage would be a bit lower because I don't have as many items to, to keep in stock, to keep in the back, to keep in my warehouse, if you will. Um, and so, so that might be advantageous there, but obviously I have to do more 
uh, production. I, I have to do four different instances of producing the t-shirts and that might cost some money to do all that setup. So there's a balance there. Um, and, and we'll talk about how to, how to actually find that balance uh, appropriately. So I already, I just talked about one of the main types of costs associated with producing a good. That's what I'm going to call K. It's the cost of storing one unit of your product, of your t-shirt for one year. And we're going to give that a value of K. Then the two other costs that I actually talked about very briefly before, there's a fixed cost of manufacturing the product. And I'm going to call that F. So that's things like setting up the uh, production line. Maybe I buy, um, you know, may maybe I buy, you know, a, a robot that can, you know, fold the t-shirts or something like that. And that's a fixed cost. That's something that is upfront. I have to, I have to pay that every single time I decide to produce a good, uh, produce a t-shirt, if you will, to keep that example rolling. Marginal cost of manufacturing one unit of the product. Sorry, that's kind of cut off there. Um, is going to is going to be labeled by G for the marginal cost, and those are those are costs that are recurring. So over the course of the year, um, you know, as you're as you're making these as you're making these these T-shirts or these or whatever good that you're producing, you're going to have costs that recur throughout the year. Maybe you have employees that you have to pay, and those are those are costs that uh, are going to keep happening over the course of the year. And so we'll call those marginal costs label them by G. These are our three main costs associated with producing a good. Remember these letters and uh, these variables and how they associate with them. I will use those variables consistently. Uh, so keep keep note of that. Um, some other some other things that we're gonna that we're gonna look at. So now that we have these types of costs, I want to I want to assign some more variables to to some uh, quantities. Q is going to be the number of units that I produce in each batch. And so when I say a batch, what I mean there is every single time I decide to produce a batch of my good. Um, and so in this red scenario, I start right off the bat and I produce a hundred in that first batch. And then I don't ever do any more production. So the number of goods produced per batch in this red case would be 100. In this blue scenario down here, I'm doing four different productions of 25 each. So each batch, each of my four batches, I'm producing 25 total. And so I'm gonna call that number of units in each batch Q. And then M is going to be the number of total units that I make in a year. So what that means is that M over Q is the number of batches in a year. If I take the total number of units that I produce and I divide that by the number of units that I make per batch, that just tells me how many batches I had. So going back to this case here in the blue, I, I'm gonna make a hundred total. You can see I make 25 here, I make 25 there, I make 25 there and I make 25 there. That's a hundred total over uh, the number that I produce per batch is 25. If I do 100 divided by 25, that gives me four. And you can see, hey, there's four batches that I do right there. One, two, three, four. So that M over Q gives me the number of batches. And so basically what we've got here is we've got these variables. We've got costs, F, G, and K. And then we've got these quantities Q and M, which are the number of units per batch and the number of units per year. Um, and so, so we're gonna wanna keep track of all of those variables. With all of that, we can actually come up with a total cost function. So a, a function given all of these costs that we've talked about and given these quantities of how many we produce per batch and annually, we can come up with an actual function that tells us what our total cost is. And this, this function is, 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 a, is a bit, um, a uh, bit cumbersome. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of these variables in here. They're, they're kind of, it looks ugly, um, but let's sort of break it down. I'm, I'm going to label it T for total cost. So T for total. And it is a function of Q. It is a function of the number of units per batch. So keep that in mind. My cost function is a function of Q, which means that F, M, G, M again, and K are all going to be constants. Those are all just singular, singular values that I, you're going to know what they are. 
then Q down here and Q right here are going to be the thing that changes. And so what we're seeing here is, is we're seeing this cost function. Um, and, and really, this is just something to memorize. We can break it down um, more if we wanted to, but this is really just our cost function. Um, you, can, you can see things in here like I've got a marginal cost here multiplied by the number of units that I produce over the whole year. So this is a marginal cost for producing one unit. And this is the number of units I produce. So you could look at this and say, hey, that right there is going to be the marginal cost for the whole year. And, and you could do similar sort of things by looking at these. And we're not, we're not going to bother too much with that. But you could, you could make, make sense of this by looking at each of these individually and see and sort of convincing yourself, yeah, they are costs that are going to incur. You see K here, maybe that has to do with storage costs. Um, and, and we see those things. We're not going to go into too much detail there. Uh, the, the textbook actually will. So if you're curious about where this comes from, the text, the text is a great uh, resource for that. Um, what we're, what we're going to focus more on is actually finding this economic lot size. So remember, economic lot size is the quantity that minimizes the total cost. And this quantity here, or excuse me, this total cost function is given here. And so what I can do is I can focus in on this word, minimize the cost, that phrase, minimize the cost. Well, this is my cost function. So guess what? If I take that cost function and I set T prime of Q equal to zero, that's going to give me the, the a relative extrema. We, we've talked about that before. We're really just doing optimization here. We're gonna take a derivative of T and we're gonna, we're gonna set it equal to zero. And when we do that, if we solve for Q, that's going to give us this square root of 2FM over K. And so um, that right there, this Q, remember Q is the number of units per batch. It's just given by the square root of two multiplied by the fixed cost, multiplied by the number of units produced annually, divided by the cost of storing one unit for a year. Um, and there we go. That's our economic lot size. That's our value. Um, we, we now know how many we should produce per batch. Um, and now we can go ahead and do an example here. So let's go ahead and look at a paint company that has a steady annual demand for 24,500 cans of paint. I'm going to tell us that it costs $2 to store a can of paint for a year, and it costs $500 to set up our production plant uh, each time that we want to produce paint. It's going to cost $500. It doesn't matter how much paint we produce, it just costs $500 to set up the plant, turn the lights on and get things running and all that. It costs $500. I want to find the uh, number of cans that we need to produce in each batch, as well as the number of batches per year that will minimize the total production cost. So the handful of things that I want to mention here are these, these numbers, and we can, we can figure out what each of those uh, are. So when I'm, when I'm looking at this, I see F, remember that's a fixed cost. That fixed cost is gonna be $500. As we said throughout the problem statement, uh, while we talked about the problem statement, it costs $500 to set up that plant, turn the lights on, get things, get things moving, right? Do all that stuff, it costs $500. And so that's gonna be our fixed cost. That happens no matter what. M, capital M, is going to be the number of units total. So this is over the course of a year. That's going to be 24,500. And then K is going to be our storage cost, which, as is labeled pretty clearly in the problem statement, is going to be $2 right there. So we, we have all of those right there. Got them listed one more time. And we can now just plug and chug. It's, it's really, really not any, any more difficult than that. We've got our economic lot size Q is square root of 2FM over K. And we stated that F was 500. We stated that M was 24,500. And we stated that K was 2. We work this out. 
we do the division, we get 3,500 cans and that's per batch. So this is 3,500 cans of paint per batch. Remember Q is per batch, M is over the course of the year. So we need to do 3,500 cans per batch. Well, now if we're trying to figure out the number of batches per year, well, let's think about it. They're gonna make 24,500 cans per year. And every time they do a batch, they're gonna make 3,500 of them. So we start off with 3,500 on our first batch, then we do a second batch and that's 7,000. We do a third batch and that's 10,500. And we just keep going, right? Well, if there's a faster way to do this, we just take the total number that we wanna do for the year. We divide it by the number per batch and that gives us seven batches. If we do seven batches of 3,500, that gives me 24,500. Uh, and for the total for the year. And so we need know that we need to do seven batches of 3,500 and, and that's our answer. We're, we're done there. We've answered that question. Um, yeah, and that's that's actually just economic lot size. Uh, pretty, pretty simply there. We're not really gonna go into too much more detail there. Um, I would highly recommend as an exercise to actually do this t prime of q equals zero. So take this function, take a derivative with respect to q and then set it equal to zero, solve for q and, and check that you do get this because um, that's something that you're gonna wanna see there. So that's economic lot size. Um, I know some, some complicated and ugly formulas there, um, but good, good to memorize, good to know, um, good to remember what these variables f, m, q, G and K all all stand for there. And uh, that'll be the lecture. We'll go ahead and stop it there.